Welcome to Statics. The method of sections. The method of sections is another method for analyzing truss member forces. The method of sections is useful when you want to find only certain member forces in a truss. The method of joints is useful when you want to find every member force in a truss. The method of sections is based on this principle. If a body is in equilibrium, then each part of the body must also be in equilibrium. This is a very useful principle in engineering. With respect to trusses, this principle means that if our truss is in equilibrium, then any section of the truss we consider must also be in equilibrium. We apply the method of sections as follows. First, we sketch a free body diagram of the whole truss. Then, use the free body diagram and our equations of equilibrium to solve for the support reactions. Next, we make a theoretical cut through our truss, cutting through our target members. We sketch free body diagrams of the cut sections. This example demonstrates what I mean by cutting through the truss. This line shows the location of the cut. A free body diagram of the cut section is shown below. Note how the members that get cut are replaced with member forces. When drawing my free body diagram, I can choose to draw the section to the left or to the right of my cut. I will choose whichever one is simpler. We solve for those forces using our equations of equilibrium on the section. Because the section is a rigid body, we have three equations, some forces x, some forces y, and some moments. We are limited to a maximum of three unknowns per free body diagram. Our strategy will be to look for ways to apply our equilibrium equations so that we can get direct solutions for our unknown member forces. Let's look at how we apply the method of sections with an example problem. Here is a truss with 11 members. It has a pin support at A and a roller support at G. There are two applied loads, one at joint C and one at joint E. We want to find the forces in members BD, CD, and CE. Our first steps are to draw a free body diagram of the whole truss, then solve for the support reactions. Here is our truss, and here is a free body diagram. I replace the pin support with an X and a Y direction reaction force. I replace the roller support with a Y direction reaction force. Summing forces in the X direction, I find AX is zero. Summing moments about point A, I get that reaction GY is five kilonewtons. And summing forces in the Y direction, I find that AY is seven kilonewtons. Here is my revised free body diagram with the support reactions shown correctly. Our next step is to make a cut through the truss and sketch a free body diagram of the cut section. We are interested in members BD, CD, and CE, so we will try to cut through all of these members. We can do that with a single cut. If we could not get all our target members with one cut, then we would get as many as we could in the cut and solve them, then repeat the process for the other members. Whenever we cut a truss, we cut it completely through. Now I draw only the members on one side of the cut. I choose the simpler side. I show the cut members as tension forces acting in the direction of the members. My section free body diagram is complete. Now we will use the equations of equilibrium of a body to solve for our unknown member forces. Since we are analyzing plane trusses, we can use three equations of equilibrium and are therefore limited to a maximum of three unknowns per free body diagram. Our strategy will be to try to select equilibrium equations that allow us to solve for one of our unknowns directly. Let's see how to apply this strategy in our example. If I sum forces to zero in the x direction, 
there will be three unknowns in the equation, force BD, force CD, and force CE. If I sum forces to zero in the y direction, there will be two unknowns in the equation, force BD and force CD. Because our truss section is in equilibrium, I can also sum moments about any arbitrary point to zero. If I sum moments about point A, all three unknowns will be in the equation. However, if I sum moments about point C, there will be only one unknown, force BD. The lines of action for force CD and force CE pass through point C, which is why they are not included in the equation. I can be clever and sum moments about point D, and there will be only a single unknown in my equation, force CE. Again, this is because the lines of action for forces BD and CD pass through point D. This is the strategy. Find a point to some moments to zero so that you can isolate a single unknown. That point you choose does not have to be a point on the truss. Just look for points where force lines of action intersect. I will sum moments about point C first. In my equation, I have the 7 kilonewton reaction force times its moment arm, 1 meter, acting in the negative direction by the right-hand rule. I also have force BD times its moment arm from point C, 1 meter, also acting in the negative direction, all equal to zero. Solving for force BD, I get negative 7 kilonewtons. So the member is in compression. I revise my free body diagram with force BD shown in the correct direction. Now I will sum moments about point D. I have the 7 kilonewton reaction force times its moment arm from point D, 2 meters. It is negative by our convention. I have the 8 kilonewton applied force times its moment arm, 1 meter. It is positive by our convention. And I have force CE. Its moment arm is equal to 2 meters times the sine of the member angle 60 degrees, since it is an equilateral triangle. It is negative by our convention. All equal to zero. CE, I get positive 3.464 kilonewtons. So the member is in tension. I revise my free body diagram with force CE. Now I will sum forces to zero in the y direction to get the last unknown force. I will need the vertical component of the force in member BD. So I will do a little trigonometry first. Solving Here's for a right force. triangle with member BD as the hypotenuse. The horizontal leg is 1.5 meters. The vertical leg is equal to the vertical distance from D to E minus the vertical distance from B to C which is 1 meter times the sine of 60 degrees. I get that it is 0 0.866 meters. The length of member BD is then found with the Pythagorean theorem. Now I sum forces in the y direction. I have positive 7 kilonewtons minus 8 kilonewtons minus the vertical component of force BD plus the vertical component of force CD, all equal to 0. Solving for force CD, I get 5.196 kilonewtons. So member CD is in tension. Now we have all three of our member forces on the cut. If more member forces were needed, we could make another cut and repeat the process. In summary, we use the method of sections when we want to find only a few member forces in our truss. It is usually much quicker than using the method of joints.